invite you this morning, my God, to come and inhabit our praises. We thank you for this, Father, that you have brought us, oh God. We thank you because you have been a good God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor you look good. You look good. You look good. You are blessed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
you have given us victory, Lord. And we give you all the praise. Hallelujah. Put your hands like this.
everything that you have done for us. You are a good God. Hallelujah. And we worship you this morning, oh God. I worship you, Lord. Omega, you are the sovereign Lord, you reign forever and ever, you are the beginning and the end, Lord, oh we worship you Lord, you are the God who is righteous, you are the God who is sovereign, you are the God who heals, you are the God who delivers, so we worship you Lord, hallelujah, we worship you God. I worship you, Lord. Hey. Oh, I come as I am, Lord. I come to worship you. I enter the holy of holies. I enter through the blood.
God Almighty, you are holy. You are highly exalted, Father. You are highly exalted above every principality. Holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Holy. Your name is Holy Father. You are holy, O oh God. You are holy. You are holy, Father. I just reflect on the goodness of the Lord. We are standing before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We are standing before our Heavenly Father. We are standing before our Big Daddy. And the Lord is here to touch somebody. Allow the Lord to speak to your heart this morning. Allow the Lord to minister to you this morning. Oh Lord, minister to your people. Lord, touch your people. Touch your people, oh God. Touch your people. Touch your people, Heavenly Father. Touch the sick in our midst, oh God. Touch the broken, touch the weary this morning, Father, we declare. Lord, touch your people in a special way. You're the repairer, oh God, of a broken heart. And Father, there is somebody who is broken right now. Somebody who's weighed down with the dissipation of God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You are all that we need. And Father, you are here. You are here, oh God. And your presence is real, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Church, let us just be quiet before him for a while. It is sometimes good to listen to what God is saying. You came at the right time, at the right place. Allow God to whisper to you something this morning.
Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. You have indeed confirmed that you are with us, O oh God. Come on, somebody, just, just thank God. Just thank God. There is that assurance that God is with you. Let's just thank God. Father, we thank you. Father, we worship you. Father, we love you. Father, we thank you because you are with us. And Heavenly Father, when we are in that mood of prayer, oh God, we want to bring our loved ones before you, dear Father. Our loved ones who have gone through bereavement, oh God, in the past few days or weeks, oh God, we want to pray for Dr. Charity Waithima who lost her mom, oh God, we pray for her in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that the God of comfort will be with her and her entire family in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Patricia and Emma, oh God, who lost her dad, my father. We pray that the God of comfort will comfort the entire family in the name of Jesus. Lord, we lift up Stella before you, dear loving father who lost her dad. Oh God, the pain in our heart only God can explain how we pray that the God of comfort will be there with the entire family in the name of Jesus. We pray for Joyce, oh God, who lost her mother. Lord of comfort, Lord of peace. Lord, I pray that your peace, oh God, will be with the entire family in the name of Jesus. We pray for Anne, oh God, who lost her mom. Lord Almighty, we pray, O oh God, for the entire family. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your presence, O oh God, will be with them, Father, even during this difficult time, O oh God. We pray, dear loving Father, for Anne Wanja, O oh God, who lost her sister, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, again, we bring before you our loved ones who are not feeling well. Lord, we pray for Gracia, O oh God, how we pray in the name of Jesus. The Lord, you'll touch her, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. The devil is a liar. There is a healing in the name of the Lord. And we pray, dear loving Father, that you touch our sister in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for Simon Omenia, Jehovah God. We pray in the name of the Lord that you will touch him, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray. I know there are so many of us in this auditorium today, Lord. Who have come, Lord, with different needs, Heavenly Father. Could be somebody here, dear, dear Lord, who says, if God is not going to fix it, then I am done. Lord, I thank you. I lift up the, the needs of your people before you. For we know that we serve a God who is able to minister to his people. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you, O oh God. We thank you for the service, for the glory and honor of your name. I let everybody else say amen. 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 Praise God. Amen and amen. Do you want to appreciate the Lord this morning? In the name of Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise, give him praise, he's one, he's one, you're my praise, he's one, you're my worship this morning, we give him praise, for your name, for your love is holy. Jesus' name. Amen. 
you know what? We receive that prophetic word that has come for this morning. The Lord reminding us that He is in our midst, that He is here with us. This morning when we were praying, during our time of intercessory, when we are in time of prayer and we are just inviting God to release the host of heaven, in my spirit I saw an angel come and stand on that side and he was dressed like the commander of the armies of God. So that what has come to confirm that truly God is in this place. Do you remember in the book of Joshua, just before the children of Israel go to take over Jericho, God shows up in their midst. And he says, as the commander of the armies of God, I have come. You see, every time God shows up in a manifested way like today, there can only but be a supernatural move of God. Because how can you relate that a shout would bring down the walls of Jericho? It had to be the hand of God at work. And I declare over your life this morning that the hand of God is at work in your life. Because as a commander of the armies of God, he has shown up in your life. He has shown up in your situation in the name of Jesus. So I want us to shout to God this morning and bring down every enemy, every wall of Jericho. It comes down. My God, we give you praise. says the fire goes before him when God shows up his enemies must be scattered I don't know who are the enemies in your life but God has shown up and they have to scatter God silences your enemies in the name of Jesus hallelujah no weapon formed against you I say no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every time, hey, I feel like today we need to address tongues of accusation, false accusations, tongues of rejection. Every tongue that rises up against you, we shall answer this morning in the name of Jesus. For this is your heritage as a child of God. Do you want to give him one final praise this morning in the Sabbath? You are more than a conqueror. You are victorious in Jesus' name. This morning we have declared that we are highly favored. Not just favored, but highly favored. Why don't you turn to your neighbor, welcome them to the house of God, and tell them you are highly favored in the name of Jesus as you take your seat in the presence of God. Amen, amen, amen. I, I was watching another clip, you know, the way um, Alan was about to finish with the drums. Then that last one, we'll just do that last one, that last one, the one that goes like this. Pa! The last one. Do you? Amen. Amen. The 
other joke is a personal joke. You may not get it, but it is well. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. Good afternoon. Buona sifiwe. Amen. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? My, my, my. God has something special for you today in the name of the Lord. I am, I'm expecting. Already God has ministered to us through the worship. Do you want to appreciate the worship team for us this morning? Thank you. Anointed, anointed worship. We continue to pray for our worship team that God will use them in a mighty way in the name of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Anybody visiting us with, uh, visiting with us today, uh, this is your first time to be in Sitamgong. We want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anybody who can lift up your hands so that we can see you. I'm looking down. I'm looking up. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. I appreciate them, church. Hallelujah. Would you like to stand up to your feet as we welcome you to our church this morning to sit I'm going upstairs. I'm trying to look. I can, I can see some people downstairs. Amen. Let's appreciate them. Give them a warm sit I'm going welcome in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are grateful that you found time to come and fellowship with us this morning. And we trust that God will meet with you in this place today in Jesus' name. We want to tell you a bit of who we are. Who are we sit I'm going? Uh huh. Yes. Amen. Amen. We are a community of believers who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and His saving grace. And what is our mission? And to make Him known and discipleship. Is this what you do every week you go out? That you're saying every week, I want to know God. I want to make him known. And I'll do this through evangelism and discipleship. Telling people about Jesus and what he has done for us. Amen. So, Karibuni Sana, we'll meet you at the end of the service. So that we can get to know you a little bit more in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, this morning, we also want to give to the Lord. And um, uh, we give in four ways. You can bring your hard cash. We have the baskets in the, in the front and somewhere else in the middle. And upstairs, we have the baskets there. Feel free to go and drop your hard cash. We can also give through our M-Pesa pay bill number. And what's our pay bill number? 933-943. You can also swipe your visa card or write your check. Uh, and address it to Christ is the answer ministries and the visa card you can swipe it in our PDQ machines at the end of the service in our information desk at the back and the Lord will bless you. I understand we have a number of children who are with us so as I pray for the offering and as we give to the Lord parents you will escort your children or the children will go to their classes and please ensure they go to where they ought to register. There is a registry before they enter the classes we need them to register as they go to their classes. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you and we honor you this morning for your faithfulness, for your goodness in our lives in the name of Jesus. We thank you for you have blessed us and we have brought gifts, tithes and offerings into the house of the Lord. And as we give them to you, may they be acceptable before you and let them be used for the furtherance of the kingdom. We pray for our children as they go to Sunday school that God, you be with them and watch over them and may they learn of the Lord and be taught of the Lord. Even from their, their young age, they will grow up in the ways of the Lord. We bless them. We bless their teachers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Thank you, children who are in the service. Please go to Sunday school. God bless you. And feel free to bring your offering to the front or to give through your MPSA as I invite the media team to give us the announcements. God bless you. Good morning. And a very warm welcome to Sita Mgong, God's Habitation. To book your seat, dial star 483 star 933 hash on both Safari Common Airtel lines or visit our website www.sitam.org. Kindly take note that our usual service timings are as follows. Our first service is at 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. and our second service is at 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Teen service is from 11.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Youth Hall. 
Crossroads Fellowship for university and college going students is from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. at the Youth Hall. Our midweek prayer service takes place every Wednesday from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. via Zoom. And our Friday Hour of Grace service takes place from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. in person and live on Facebook. Please send in your prayer request before and during the Friday service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. The Children's Ministry welcomes all adults and youth to register as teachers and help us in the following areas, ages five and below, ages six to nine, ages 10 and above, hopes class, cadets, choir and talent, resource, and lastly, training and CED. Please register through the Google Forms on the various Sitam Gong Ministry WhatsApp platforms and help us fulfill our mission, Transformed Children, Transforming Society. Sitam Gong Women's Ministry July edition presents King of Glory, an in-person meeting which will be happening on the 17th of July from 9 a.m. and the speaker will be Reverend Josphat Shichende. The dress code will be black with a touch of pink, red, purple, blue, green or yellow. All Ministry of Health protocols will be observed. We are pleased to announce the first reading of Bands of Marriage between Andrew Awili and Lydia Nangila on the 28th July 2021 at Sitam Gong from 10 a.m. If anyone has any just reason why this couple should not be joined together in holy matrimony, please write to the senior pastor within 21 days before the wedding date or forever hold your peace. All family heads and matriarchs around the world, Satan presents the Family Discipleship Conference coming this July, the 20th to the 24th. The conference will be a virtual meeting. We have dubbed the conference Resilient Through the Storm. And our guiding verse is Job 23 verse 10, When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. Our speakers, Bishop Callisto Dede, taking us through the conference theme. Ernest Wamboye, taking us through a panel discussion on affair proofing our marriages. Dr. Mamusha Fenta, taking us through God's plan for the family. Elder Sam McCormick, the laws of financial fitness. Dr. John Mpuffoli, family finances and wealth creation. And Dr. Charity Waifema, who will be taking us through a panel discussion on mental wellness. We have guest artist that is Michael Mahandere from Zimbabwe and our very own Rebecca Dawn. So please make sure you don't miss this opportunity to come forth as gold. All you have to do is register at the following link and you're set. Remember the dates are 20th to the 24th of July. God bless you. I have been your host, Teacher Kanyingi Kagushia from Sunday School, wishing you a blessed service and a great week ahead. Amen. Amen. Wow. We thank God for the media team. I think there was a clip for the men's meeting this Saturday. Oh, I'm being told, no, there was no clip. But men's meeting is happening this Saturday right here in Sitamgong from 7 till 9 in the morning a.m. 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. I want to invite every man in this place, please join us. Amen. Now, last Sunday, we started a new series on the book of Colossians chapter 1 on the supremacy of Christ to continue from where Moffat Johnson Kibiro uh, brought us to is our Deputy Bishop, Reverend Dr. Karita Bagara. Reverend Karita Bagara is married to Mam Jacinta Bagara, and they are blessed with two sons and a daughter. Their family has since expanded to actually, is that three sons and two daughters? And they have three grandchildren. One 
of the most important thing I love about Reverend Karita Mbagara is that he's a man given to exposing scripture and helping believers live out scriptures in their daily life. Praise God. And so, would you put your hands together as you help me in welcoming to this podium Reverend Karita and his dear wife, Mam Jacinta Bagara, to come and bring the word of God to us. Would you do a better job? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor, and your leadership team for having us. You know, when you are moved to the head office, you are the mercy of the senior pastors. So thank you for your masses that have allowed us to have an altar to minister to, our minister in. We are grateful. But we are honored to be here, to be with you people, wonderful people of God. And it's nice to see all of you coming back to the place of in-person worship. There is something that is unique that you don't find when you do it digitally, but when you can't help it, yes, you can do digitally, but in person is a beautiful thing. Uh, I will ask my wife to greet you. She will read the passage that we'll be considering, and uh, then she will pray for the word. Praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank God that I too have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and I have come here to be ministered to just like you have come to be ministered to by the Lord. We can read the word of God together in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 1 to 14. So if they can open up that passage we can begin together. And I read Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to God's holy people in Colossae, the faithful brothers in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and love that spring from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in, you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you. In the same way, the gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on our behalf and who also told us of your love in the Spirit. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. Verse 10, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to, the, to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. Verse 13, for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray together. Indeed, our Heavenly Father, we exalt you in this place, in this house, where we have gathered, not for ourselves, but as unto you. And so as we look up to you, we pray that you speak to each one of us in a personal way, 
so that the message that will be shared to us, oh Lord, it will have meaning in our lives. We will pick something that you are speaking to us to go and uh, do it. We also pray for your servant that you may use him and that that which you have placed in his heart, indeed it will burn in him that he will be able to share it out. And at the end of it, may all the glory and the honor come back to you. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And God bless you. Why not ask if he were? Yes, we will continue from where we stopped last Sunday. I believe that you are told that the letter is written to a people that are faced with a not a dilemma but a challenge because there are some false teachers who have risen among them and have started distorting the truth and removing the centrality of Christ from the lives of God's people. So they are threatened and therefore Paul writes to still say that Jesus is supreme. The purpose of writing this book is on the supremacy of Christ or the centrality of Christ in the life of the believer. But secondly, he writes so that he can help these brethren to be mature in the word of God and in the truth because it is by knowing the truth that they can stand. They can be like the tree that is planted by the waterside that is not moved or that is not shaken by every wind of doctrine that has come as we read in the book of Ephesians. Do not be tossed every which way by every wind of doctrine that comes. And because there are doctrines that also come in our day, it's important for us to be grounded in the word of God. But he also writes, seeking prayer and support because of the ministry that he is doing. But some of these things will come later. We will try to just uh, share what is coming at the beginning. Verse 1 to 14 is the beginning. And in this passage, I see it as a passage that he's trying to get the believers to a place of loving God and worshiping him. So if I was to title my sharing today, it is a call to worship. A call to worship or a call to thanksgiving. A call to worship or a call to thanksgiving. Let's look how he gets them to that place where they are giving thanks to the Lord. Verse 1 and 2, and I will not read again, it is what we would call salutation. And here we see the writer of the book and we see the addressee. The writer of the book is Paul and he is with Timothy who he says is our brother. One thing that I want to underline from that is that he says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. First, he says that he's an apostle of Christ Jesus. An apostle is one who has been called, has been equipped, and has been sent. And that is the framework we find in the church of the New Testament. Since Jesus' uh, arrival, the church is led by apostolic ministry. Apostolic meaning people that are sent. But the people who are sent have been equipped. And they are equipped only when they have had the call of God. Luke chapter 9 verse 1 and 2 will show you how it happens. Jesus called their disciples and he equipped them with their ability to do the work. And then he sent them. And Paul says, I have also been called. And I want to declare in the name of Jesus that we are all called by God. And he calls us so that he can equip us through the preaching of the word like we are doing today. So that he can send us to different places to do his will. But when he sends us, he sends us to specific areas. And that's why he says that he is sent by the will of God. And God has a will concerning your life. 
God has a will concerning my life. God has a purpose. He did not just create us haphazardly and started wondering what he will do with you. If we had time, we would show you that God is always purposeful and a good of plan. Right from the beginning of creation, he created things in a good order. He did not create me and start as a human being and start wondering what I am going to eat. He did not create the animals and wonder what they will eat. Go and read it. It is light fast. We say in biology, it is the source of life. Then vegetation will come, and the other lights and the water and everything. When all those things are in place, the animals are created. And finally, the human beings are created. I make a joke out of that and say that's why I eat meat, because it was created before me so that I can enjoy. But what I am making a point here is God has shown us that we are called to be sent. It is important for us to be in the will of God. Paul himself underscores that fact by showing us that he is called and sent by the will of God. Without the will of God, you will fail. We see his self-awareness, his acknowledgement of who he is in God. But secondly, I want to say that he is addressing a people that he calls uh, God's holy and faithful people. He is appreciating God's people because when you appreciate people, you treat them accordingly and vice versa. When you don't appreciate people, you don't treat them with dignity. And Paul says to God's holy people, and he recognizes that those who are in God are very important people. And there are very many important people in this sanctuary. As many as received the Lord Jesus as their personal savior, you are so important that God sent his son to come into the world and die for you. And and when you are God's people and you are that important, you deserve to be blessed. So Paul says, I acknowledge that you are God's holy and faithful people. And for that reason, I wish you God's grace. And you know what is grace. I'm sure it has been expounded. It's God's favor. It means that you get what you don't deserve. You get what you could never qualify for. So God's people are blessed. And I want to declare and declare by faith that God's grace is upon this place. Hallelujah. Because there are many important people. It is a lesson for us as preachers that we must remember that we are also speaking to such people. And secondly, he says that let there be peace in your life. Meaning this is the ideal condition for life to be lived in. Peace is important. And as I said in the first service, appreciation is medicine for the soul. When we are appreciated, we are all happy. No one is allergic to blessing. And so I bless you because nobody is going to be sneezing or having a problem because of the blessing of God. Amen. Let us learn from Paul to appreciate the people that God gives us to minister to. Whether it's in your family, learn to appreciate them, especially when they belong to the family of God. Do not despise those for whom God gave his one and only son. Let us appreciate them. So Paul says, it's me the writer, and I'm writing to significant people. And because of that, he says, I give thanks. From verse 3 we read, we always thank God, and it is proved of we, not just himself, uh, we thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. And I want to take first the fact that he is giving thanks, because that's what he expounds, I mean, he expounds from verse 3 all the way to verse 8. And he says that we give thanks, and that is characteristic of Paul. There are many other passages, Romans 1, 8, he also is thanking God. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 14, he's thanking God for the Corinthians. Ephesians 1, 6, and when you read some of these churches, the, the Corinthians, they had issues, but he still gives thanks, and he wants us to get to that place where we give thanks because of what God has done for us. And this is fronted. The issue of thanksgiving and prayer is put at the front because it is important. 
It is important for us to pray. And prayer is good because prayer gets us to the place we are supposed to be. And I want to say prayer is work and it works for the one that is praying. I want to say I am where I am because of prayer. And I know that you are there because of prayer. Either your prayer or prayer of somebody else. But we'll talk more about prayer in the verses that follow. But here he's giving thanks for the Colossians. And there are four reasons that I see that he gives as to why he gives thanks. The first one is this. But all these are grounded on one thing. God's goodness to his people. And he says the first thing is that you Colossians in verse 4 have come to faith. You have come to faith. Maybe we read verse 4. It says, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love you have for all God's people, the faith and the love, let's just stop there. You have come to faith. We have heard of your faith. And what he is saying is that these people have had the faith. They love God's people. In other words, they have heard the word and activated it. And you see, you have come to faith only when it gets to your mind. I want you to see the work of the, of the word of God is that it gets to your mind. You process it. It affects your heart when there is conviction. And then it is activated through your will. The three things that make your soul is the mind, the emotion, and the will. And that's how we come to faith. How do I get to that uh, conclusion? Because he says, you did not just hear it, but you have received it and you have loved. There is evidence of what you had. My brothers and sisters, by this, we can also say that God expects us to receive the word of God holistically in its wholeness, but when it comes to us, we must activate it. We must action it. We must hear it, believe it, and action it. The saving word of God challenges us in all those areas, in our minds, and then we leave it out. Hallelujah. The Colossians, secondly, are discipled properly or they are properly discipled and for that reason he gives thanks not only from the fact that we see that they love God's people but Paul goes to what somebody has called the triology of virtue somebody Norman Geisler calls faith love and hope as a as the triology of virtue and in verse 5 we read you have it continues from verse 4 by the way all this is one verse one sentence. Paul used to write very long sentences. It's just that it's broken. But verse 5, it says, The faith and love that springs from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel. It talks of three things, five things there. Faith, love, hope, and the three are founded on the true message of the gospel. And I want to say that faith is looking to God. It is upward looking. It is based on what God has done in the past. As we expound, as I'm teaching you what God had done for the Colossians, your faith is stirred up. Your faith comes up, but it causes you to look to God, not to man. True faith does not cause us to look to man. Or to the preacher, it causes us to look to God. And Paul says that you have that faith. But secondly, you have love. And love causes us to be effective by touching people that are around us. It is in the present. While faith is from the past, love is in the present. We, in this time of corona, when true word of God has affected us, we will be touching people around us. We will be affecting positively those that are around us. We will be mindful of what is happening with our neighbor. And I have had good reports of the things that are happening right here in your midst. Brethren who have really taken the word of God and are concerned about their neighbors, are concerned about their pastors, are concerned about the people that they work with and they are doing something. Your love is like that of Colossians. Thank you, Lord, for the brethren here in Sitam Gong. Hallelujah. 
in the present. It is not just the past. We are present and also in the past. We are there. But also it says in hope. A hope that tells us that God has in store great things for us in the future. And in fact, it is that hope, it is what we look forward to that causes us to have faith and to have hope. Isn't that what Paul is saying in verse 5? That you have faith and love that spring from the hope that is stored up for you in heaven and about which you are already, sorry, and about which you have already heard in the true message. What Paul is also saying, that this is grounded on the true message, which, which leads me to the third point or the third reason why Paul is giving thanks. The true gospel has been heard by the Colossians through the preach, preaching of Epaphras. Gospel has been preached to them and they have received it. And he is telling us that the good news have come to you. And the good news are grounded or is grounded in Jesus Christ. So Paul starts showing that the foundation is Jesus Christ and not another. It is grounded on the word or the true message of the gospel. And the gospel is from God. And therefore the good news is the problem of sin resolved. The good news is that, and men and brethren, we should not in any way present the good news like they were bad news of condemnation. I can stand here and condemn you, but that's not what God has sent. He has sent the news that the problem of evil has been sorted out in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's why Christ is the answer. Amen? Through his death, burial, and resurrection, we are saved. You see, our faith is not focused on anything else or founded on anything else other than Jesus Christ. And any faith, any salvation that we may be professing is as good as the object on which it is placed. What is the object of your salvation? Is it idols like the Colossians who have been taken? Is it to philosophies? Is it to money? Is it to possessions? Is it to status? No, it is the word of God. Not philosophy, not doctrine, not religious system, but the word of God as, the, as we learn from, from the scriptures. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence in this place. Hallelujah. But also, Paul, give thanks because the gospel has universal application. It's practical everywhere. He tells us that it is affecting the whole world. God's grace is to be received because it is also working, not just for us. It is not the preserve of a few. It is touching the whole world. And this grace is working to bring suitable fruit in the lives of people. And it is causing us to bear the right fruit. If you read on, you will find that. Very quickly, let me also say this. Paul is giving thanks for a people that he has not met. He's not the one that preached to them. He is preaching out of the good news that have been sent to him or have been shared with him by Epaphras, which raises two questions. If somebody was to give a report about your faith, how is it? How is, you know, you are stand in God? Is it that somebody can give a good report? Or if they give a good report concerning you, it would be a lie? You are not living the truth? Give people the reason to speak positively about you. But the second thing is this. There are some people who are not like Epaphras. Every time they report about others, it's negative things they speak about. Even when somebody is good, even when somebody is right, they give negative reports. They give negative things about that person. Let us be like Epaphras so that we can cause thanksgiving to flow from all over. Paul says, I give thanks for you. But in verse 9 to the end, he brings, to verse 14 that is, 
he brings the aspect of prayer. Please notice that he said we give thanks as we pray for you. And the first thing that I want to note here is that it is an issue of consistency. For this reason, you know, for the reasons that I have uh, expounded, since the day I'm reading verse 9, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. There is consistency. There is persistency. There is consistency in praying for the people. And brothers and sisters, we need to learn from Paul. In verse 3, he said, we pray for you when we pray for you, not if we pray for you. So it is not a question of if. It is that we have determined we'll be praying for you. Have you determined that you'll be praying for certain people? Do you have a group? Do you have people you pray for other than yourself, other than your family? Are there other people outside of your sphere, immediate sphere of influence that you are committing to God? Do you have a safari group that you always pray for consistently? I suggest that you can make a timetable and decide every Monday I'll be praying for the safari group. Every Tuesday, I'll be praying for my family and the larger family. Every Wednesday, I will be praying for Sitam pastors, starting with the ones in Gong, and mention them by name. Every Thursday, I will be praying for our country. Every Friday, you can identify another ca category, and you place it as you pray for your usual things, because you'll never forget to pray for your, your staff. Remember those other things. Write it. Post it somewhere. Make it in your family that there is a day you pray for. I was telling the service earlier that we have been with a, couple, or with a couple of friends that we have prayed for. We started by praying and meeting, actually, every week. Then as days went by, it was not possible we meet every month. We even met last night because we meet the second Saturday of the month. And we have been doing that for more than 30 years. And even if one couple is not there, the others are there to pray. And they send the prayer requests and are prayed for. We can do it because our prayers are powerful. We have already said that prayer works for us when we pray. The Bible talks about the power of prayer in many ways. It tells us of this woman that is so far down in the social strata, but she is persistent in going to a high-ranking judge. And because of her persistence, the prayer is granted. Her request is granted. And Jesus was teaching us that when we are persistent in prayer, there will be great things that happen. When you read the book of Revelation, it teaches us that our prayers are taken and offered as incense before God. And the result is rumbling and thundering that is sent down in answer to your prayer. God wants to thunder to your problem. But if you don't pray, nothing will happen. Some of you are here because God had used somebody else to pray for you. Now, let that continue. Pray for other people that don't even know you so that God will continue doing his work and thundering in this world and saving people, especially we see as we see people being deceived. Pray for people that need to know God. Paul was praying for these people consistently. But secondly, note the content that starts from verse 9. He says that I will pray for you to be filled with the spirit or by knowledge that is spirit given. What he is saying, there is knowledge that needs to come your way. And this knowledge is revelational. This knowledge is not just pure facts. It is spiritual intelligence that makes you be transformed. And because of time, allow me to take all those things together. And he says, I am focused on the spiritual, not so much the material. The spiritual has eternal consequences. The material will come to an end. I am not saying don't pray for plots. 
Don't pray for cows and don't pray for, for cars. No, I'm saying the priority should be the spiritual things. And Paul shows us, have knowledge. And this knowledge should be guided by understanding and wisdom. If you read the passage, you will find those three. And as I was illustrating earlier, I was saying that knowledge is at the lowest level. It is important. It's the starting point. But you need to get to a place where you are in understanding. Understanding is getting the implications of that knowledge. It is getting to understand what does that knowledge require so that you can make the right decisions. And then it is not enough to have that. You need to get to the place of wisdom where you apply, where you are practical. Practical obedience is the proof that you have gotten the truth. And that's what Paul is praying for. And he is saying there are some people who have no idea who Jesus is. They are very far. They are out there. But you need to pray for them to get to the place where they get to know Jesus. But it is not enough to know Jesus. They need to move to a place of knowing that if you don't have Jesus, life is going to be difficult. You, they need to understand that knowing Jesus is the one that will make you be transformed for eternity. But there are people who are at the place of knowledge. They know about Jesus. They have even gotten to know that if I don't get saved, I will be lost for eternity. And they keep on moving there. And they have been, you know, coming to church and maybe they are seated here. I am telling you, my friend, you need to take the next step and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior because that's where transformation truly happens. It's important to have knowledge. It's good and even better to have understanding, but it's best when you apply that knowledge. And you get that understanding. And therefore Paul prays, be controlled. The word he uses is be filled. But it means be controlled by the knowledge of God's will. What is God's will for you? That's why Paul himself started by saying, I am an apostle by the will of God. And I don't only have that knowledge. I am applying it. I am using it. And my brothers, do you want to succeed? My sister, do you want to succeed? Then make sure that you follow that framework. But he says, I don't just pray because I pray. I pray with understanding, greater understanding. So he says, there is something I'm looking for from, for you. So verse 10, he tells us this. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. And please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing the knowledge of God, being strengthened with the power, with all power, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. The outcome of my prayer is that you become Christ-like. You become equals to the Lord's standards. That your moral character, your conduct will be pleasing to God in every way. Not just pleasing to men. In fact, the issue of pleasing men should be secondary. You should be pleasing to God. Live a life worthy of the Lord. This is the genuine transformation. This is the true transformation, Colossians. And that's what I tell the people of God. That it is that you get to the place where people call you a Christian. Where when you say you are resigning, people cry even when they are not believers. Because they know how faithful you have been. But Paul says, beyond that I want you to be productive. To bear fruit in every work that you do. That you have service that is complementing your worship. You have service that shows that truly you are what you are called to do. Did you notice he said that you pleasing to him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, but that's not enough. He says that you continue in depth 
of the knowledge of God. Here he is not saying get something new, but get to understand yourself fully and what God has put in you. Let me illustrate it by this. Scientists tell us when a baby is born, that baby has everything that they will ever be. They have the capacity of what their hair will be, what their eyes will be, what their hands will be, the physique that they will ever gain. It was there when you were born, even you as an adult. You had it, everything. You got the genuine thing. They call it the DNA. I want to tell you, when you came to Jesus, you have the DNA, but you are like a child. You need to mature. You need to grow. You need to know more of who you are and what it is that you have in God. It is not that you start moving from one church to the other, looking for a new experience. You don't just listen to every Tom, Dick, and Harry that comes into town. You have the real thing. You have the real gold. Don't go for the fool's gold, but continue increasing in that. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know those who are going to be apostles are already apostles before they get saved? God has put that in them. Those who are going to be preachers are going to be that. They just need to grow and discover themselves. God is not wondering what you are going to be. When he creates you, he puts you with every capacity that you will ever be. You can become stunted and stunted you in your growth and protect or it's not protect but rather hinder what God wants to do in your life. But you can also say, no, I am going to be everything that God intended me to be. So he is telling the Corinthians, I pray for you so that you can be everything you are meant to be. Hallelujah. So he tells them, continue increasing in the knowledge of God. We never arrive, brethren. We continue on increasing. Don't become like the Galatians who reached a place and they started wondering, did we get the genuine thing? And Paul has to ask them, who bewitched you? And then he says, be strengthened with the power so that you have great with the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. Verse 11, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you might, you may have great endurance and patience. I'm praying for you so that you will become people that can resist evil. Endurance is about resistance. And when you have patience, you are calm even in difficult situations. You don't seek revenge. You don't seek retaliation. When you are a patient person, you will be able to withstand opposition. And that's what he is telling the Corinthians. But why? He tells us that you move from there so that you can give thanks joyfully. When I pray for you like this, it is so that you will not be begrudging others. You get to a place where you give thanks. You know, joy is not happiness. But joy is independent of the attending circumstances. You may be joyful even in situations that are tough. When you have endurance, you have patience, you will have joy. Even when things are difficult. We are repeatedly told to give thanks, which is the key expectation of a spiritually mature believer. And Paul is telling these people, I want you to get to a place that when things are not working, you know who you are in God. And you know your God so well that you will still say, thank you, Lord. That you can get to that place where he is writing and saying to the Thessalonians, in everything. Did he say in some things? In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is why I said that this is a call to worship, a call to thanksgiving, a call to being in a position where you are stable, you are stabilized in the things of God, you are not taken in by every wind of doctrine, you are able to say, Lord, Despite and in spite 
of all that may be happening around me, I thank you. You say, Lord, I want to thank you because in the corona season, you still know what is happening. Whether I have been affected or infected, I thank you. When I am unaffected, I thank you. But when I get infected, I thank you. I get to a place that I have matured. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. John the Baptist was in prison and he sent people to Jesus. Jesus, are you the one or should I be looking for another one? He was a minister of the gospel. And what did Jesus do? Jesus healed some people, the lame and the blind. And he told the people that had been sent, go and report that to John. What John was being told is this, whether I am working in your life or not, I am still God. That's a hard gospel. I saw it. I saw it. You can't say a big amen. But God is telling you, my brother, my sister, you came here to give God the last chance, and you are telling him, I have prayed many times, and you don't listen. He is telling you, look around. You will see what I am doing in the lives of others to show you that I am God, and I am sovereign, and I decide what I will do for who, at what time, and when. And even if I am not working, or you think I am not working in your life, because indeed God is always working sometimes to bring things that we don't want in our lives. But whether in your life you are seeing signs and wonders, but look around, others are receiving signs and wonders and trust him. That's what Paul is telling us. Get to a place when things are not working in your particular situation, you can still thank the Lord. You can still give thanks to the Lord. Why? Verse 12 to the end. I will not read, but I will tell you four verbs that are used. First, because he has qualified you to share in the inheritance that is found in the kingdom of light. Hallelujah. Verse 12, giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the holy people in the kingdom of light. It's the scripture. I have qualified you. You are competent. You are deserving. Not because of what you have done, but because of what I have done. Give thanks because you have been qualified. You have been qualified, I said. If you have received Jesus, you have been qualified. But not just qualification and to be left there. He has rescued you. He has put a hedge of protection around you. The penalty of sin or uh, the sword of demagogue that was hanging on top of you has been removed. We have no reason to fear the devil and his hosts. We have been rescued. And you know, I wish I was preaching the other passages where he will write to them and tell them that Jesus has triumphed. Oh, hallelujah. But this is the beginning of what is coming. Don't miss church because somebody will be telling you in a greater way that God has sent Jesus and he has defeated the devil and the devil has no power. You don't have to fear your ancestors. Yes, I know some of you are being told your great-grandmother said this and you are scared and you are fearing. You are in Jesus. <laughs> Let the grandmother say that voice is silenced by what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Qualified, rescued. But he did not qualify us and rescue us and then leave us in Egypt. He has brought us home. He has brought us to the kingdom of his son. Yes, we are walking in the world, but brothers and sisters, we have been freed from enslavement and we belong to the kingdom of light. We have been removed from the Lebo's kingdom and we are not wandering there aimlessly. We have been taken to the sovereignty of the rightful kingdom. Our eternity is with him, not with the devil. 
Hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. We can walk with our heads. You know, there are people who are like Jacob, as described in the book of Isaiah, that he is a warm. And they read that in the book of, that's in the Old Testament. Brethren, we are to walk majestically, confidently, with assurance. The blood of Jesus has the power to deliver us, to set us free. The blood of Jesus has saved us. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. The blood of Jesus has redeemed us. The blood of Jesus has given us access. The blood, we sang that, didn't we? By the blood we have access. The blood of Jesus has given us authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. And finally, he says that, and I read this, verse 14, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We have been emancipated. We have been liberated. There is complete deliverance for us. The price has been paid. It was heavy. It costed the son of God, but we have been redeemed. Jesus' salvation, this is what Paul is saying. Jesus' salvation is preeminent. It is above everything else. No other person could redeem us. No other person could forgive us. No other person could transfer us out of the kingdom of the devil into God's kingdom. But God has done it, and he has done it wholly on the basis of grace and mercy. Where grace is receiving what we don't deserve, and mercy is not receiving what we deserve. We deserve to be thrown out of, of God's kingdom. We deserve to be taken to hell, but because of the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, Paul is saying Jesus is supreme in his salvation. And because he is supreme and he has done so much for us, we need to lift our hands to him and worship him and glorify him and exalt him and receive him into our lives and walk with him. That's what I was sent to come and tell you people in Gong, that God wants you to honor him and to be assured that it is well because of what Jesus has done. Amen? Amen. Will you do that? I invite the senior pastor to help us finish the service. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every prayer that I am made, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life, why don't we sing it together? And all my life you have been faithful. fail me. For oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days have been held in your hands. All my days have been held in your hands. From the moment I wake up. From the moment that I wake up. Until I lay my head. Until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will sing of the
that you have rescued us, qualified us, bought us with a price and redeemed us. We give you all the praise, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done, Lord. Blessed is your name. Blessed is your name. Let me ask you to just take your seat for a moment before we end our service. I want to ask you to bow your heads for a word of prayer. This morning you've heard that Paul is giving thanks to God for the faith that the Colossians church had when they received the gospel. He thanks God for them having been discipled for the true gospel they had received and how they lived it out. And then he prays for them and give thanks to God for them because God had rescued them, because God had qualified them, because God had bought them, because God had redeemed them. Could you be in this place you've heard of this gospel? But you've not made a decision to follow Jesus. God has great news for you. If your fellowship with him is broken, you can experience this redemption. He wants to save you. That's the gospel message we're hearing here. God wants to save you. And so if you're here, you know that your relationship with God is broken. You're not born again. But you want this relationship restored. I want to ask you to lift up your hand. We'll see it. We'll ask you to put it down and we'll pray for you. You will experience this redemption. This faith will be born in your heart. You'll be rescued. You will come into a family of God. You can experience freedom as you walk out of this place. So if you're in this place and you're saying, Pastor, I sense God is talking to me. I want to my relationship with God restored. Would you shoot up your hand? We'll see it and we'll pray for you. Is there anybody like that here? Thank you, my sister. Put your hand down. Thank you. Anybody else? You're saying, pray for me. Pray for me. Pray for me. I want my relationship with God restored. Pray for me. Anybody else? You can shoot your hand up. We'll see it. We'll pray for you this afternoon experience salvation you can experience redemption maybe I haven't seen another hand is there anybody else in this place you are saying pray for me I need my relationship with God restored I need forgiveness of sin the most important thing that you can ever do. We want to pray for our sister. Our sister, would you lift up your hand to God? And anybody else who wants prayers, just lift it to God as we pray. Father, you see that hand lifted up. You know that child of yours Father, we are praying right now that that broken relationship that your child has experienced, that your children have experienced, would you forgive them? Would you wash them? Would you restore that relationship? You say if we confess our sins, you're faithful, you're just to forgive us, to cleanse us from every unrighteousness. Right now, I pray for forgiveness upon them. Lord, set them free. 
Write them names in the book of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My sisters, your sins are forgiven. You are redeemed. If anything happens today, you will see Jesus. The devil has no hold over your life. Sin has no dominion over your life. Amen. Let me ask you to pick your belongings. Uh, Pastor Moffat, would you come right here? Would you pick your belongings and come and meet this pastor? We don't want to embarrass you. He will give you some information about people who are growing in the faith every Sunday from, from 8 to, to 10.30 in the morning. Here we have classes to help believers be discipled and to grow. Would you pick your belongings and come? Pick your belongings and come. Yes, just come. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Did you lift up your hand? You can also pick your belongings and come and join Pastor here. He will keep you for five minutes and he'll give you information. Anybody else? Okay. Are we waiting for you? Oh, come, come. Yeah. I may not have seen your hand, but we are not here to embarrass you. Just pick your belongings and come. I may not even have seen your hand, but if you made that prayer, and if you meant it, you can come. Amen. Our first time visitors, probably you're visiting here for the very first time, and um, uh, probably you also visited us last Sunday. We didn't offer you any cup of tea because we were fasting. I want to ask our first time visitors to come this way to my left. Amen. Any first time visitors? Can I see by a show of hands those who are visiting with us for the very first time? Ah, come down, come. We have a cup of tea. Yes, come. And you can come with that person who brought you if you're feeling alone. Come with them. Come to this side. Amen. Come and join us right here. We have prepared a cup of tea for you. Please don't feel embarrassed. Just come. You're our visitors. And we appreciate you and we are honoring you. Amen. Amen. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. Shine upon you. 